Hello there, my fellow Battletech aficionados, and welcome back to another video from this wonderful universe. Today's episode has actually been a long time coming, and I probably should have done it a long time ago. It also ended up being quite a lot longer than I expected, so I hope your attention is extra focused today. The topic, as you might read from the title, is the military organization and structure of the clan's military. A pretty long time ago I made a similar video on the Inner Sphere military, and this time I finally decided it was the right time to explain what all those points and binaries and novas and galaxies actually meant. Because I do mention them in pretty much every clan mech video. So without further ado, let us learn about clan military, shall we? The pinnacle of clan society, and pretty much the entire reason for its existence, clan military diverges quite sharply from inner sphere military thanks to several factors. While the warrior caste is the most visible part of a clan's military, or Tuman as it's called, it also includes members of other civilian castes. The technician caste in particular features heavily in military units, handling duties like maintenance and communication also making up the crews of the dropships and warships. The merchant caste is also involved, responsible for handling all matters of military logistics. After being born into a crash, clan trueborn warriors are then assigned to a Sibco or sibling company, composed of children from the same gene parents. The cadets are raised and trained together, indoctrinated into clan lore and prepared for the day when they have to compete for the first trial of position and earn their place as warriors. The exact nature of training can differ from clan to clan, although in general Sibcos will spend their time at either a primary or secondary training facility. Primary facilities are geared towards training frontline units only, offering the best training possible and richly supplied with resources. Primary facilities can usually handle more than 8 Sibcos at a time, and graduate a new one every 3 to 6 months, depending on the clan's training doctrine. Depending on the needs of the clan, the secondary facilities, also known as satellite facilities, will handle the training of moderately successful trueborns, freeborns and specialist types of warriors. The secondary facilities can train 4 Sibcos at a time, on average 1 graduating per year. Some do share resources with primary facilities, although those always take precedence. Freeborns can also enter the warrior caste without being captured by a clan. It will take the form of a trial of position known as the blooding. It is in this trial that a warrior would have to face one warrior of each type, a mech warrior, an elemental and an aerospace pilot. If the warrior wins the bidding, they will receive an honor name based on the clan they are in such as Barry Wolf, Linda Jade Falcon and so on. Compared to the militaries of the Inner Sphere, the clans actually don't have any distinction between enlisted and officer ranks. In effect, all warriors are considered officers to some degree, with some rough parallels to Inner Sphere military structure, although the comparisons break down below the rank of point commander. Their units are organized around a base 5 system, which differs in several regards to classic inner sphere formations. The clans rank their units into a set of categories based on intended role, skill and equipment level. The frontline units are the main assault force of the clans. They utilize the best resources that the clan has. They are organized into combined arms formations, omnimechs, omnifighters and elementals and assign the most important missions in a campaign. Although not unheard of, Freeborns barely ever get a chance to serve in a frontline unit. Second line units are a clan's reserve and garrison force, used to hold ground taken by the frontline units or to attack secondary objectives. These forces typically consist of trueborn warriors less skilled or those who have aged past the point where they were still worthy of getting in a frontline unit. And while not given the best equipment, they still possess Omni technology and given decent logistical support. A step down from the second line units, although in the same category, are provisional garrison units. These are held in the rear to clean up after the front line and second line units and hold much less important targets. 
These units do not really get to use Omni technology or battle armored elementals, instead making use with conventional battle mechs and aerospace fighters, along with combat vehicles and unarmored infantry. Some clans make no distinction between second line clusters and provisional garrison clusters, or PGCs, leading to a greater reserve force with admittedly greater inequality between units. Freeborns, regardless of skill, are most commonly assigned to second line units, if a clan allows them to serve as warriors to begin with. Last and the most unfortunate are the Solama units, the proverbial bottom of the barrel. Equipped primarily as infantry, sometimes with outdated battle mechs or vehicles, they are given the crappiest assignments, like bandit hunting. Consisting of aged or disgraced warriors, these units may sometimes be ordered, in the face of overwhelming odds or close to certain death, to hold a location or attack the enemy in a suicidal rush. Solama units also make the bulk of a clan planet's defense militia. Like I said in the beginning, for the second part of the video, we're gonna go over the actual formation types and the officers commanding each. I think it's important to mention here that what I'm about to tell you is not actually set in stone for each and every clan. Just like the chapters of Space Marines in 40k, for example, are more or less codex compliant, the clans as well have some variation in the way they organize their armies. And we might actually get to that as we're gonna cover individual clans someday. So, starting at the very bottom, we have the point. The point is the basic clan military formation, and considered by Nicholas Kerensky to be the smallest effective deployment of any military, a doctrine that stayed unchanged up to today. The point commander is the very first official level of command authority. The amount of authority carried by the point commander is not exactly fixed, as the point can vary in size. Since a single mech does constitute a point in clan military structure, Technically, each clan mech warrior is a point commander, although only the assholes actually use the title. The rank does carry more authority in other branches of clan military. In aerospace fighters, the point commander acts as the flight lead. In battle armor points, the point commander leads the five elementals in a unit, similar to an inner sphere corporal. An armored vehicle point commander is responsible for two tanks in one point. Finally, conventional infantry point commanders command a 25-man unit. In the inner sphere, this formation would be a platoon, and typically be commanded by a lieutenant. On space vessels, some clans will place a point commander in charge of a team on non-warrior cast crewmen, like technicians, and in these instances, the warriors go by the rank of Star Commander Junior Grade. Following the point, we have the Star. The star is the basic building material of the clan military units. It consists of five points, working together to provide the best firepower in a unit with the smallest logistical footprint. A star is commanded by a star commander. The equivalent in the inner sphere is lieutenant. Clan warriors do require several years of success before being promoted to a star commander. Alternatively, a Sibco cadet can test into the position by defeating two opponents during their trial of position. The battle mech star consists of five omnimechs, or in the case of garrison units, five standard battle mechs. At a star level, mechs are organized depending on capability. Grouping together mechs of greatly varying weights, speeds, and offensive proficiencies is usually seen as an invitation for the enemy to divide them in the field. But while stars are defined by the weight composition of their points in a way similar to mech ratings, light, medium, heavy, and assault, these types do not need to contain just mechs of that weight rating. A clan Omnifighter star consists of 10 fighters, and differs from the mech star in that mixed designs and weight classes are common. Medium weight fighters dominate among clan armies along the lower end heavyweight designs, although not to the exclusion of other types. Clan and naval stars will contain five or six vessels, either warships, jump ships, or dropships, often with an additional command vessel. An armor star consists of ten vehicles, but due to the clan's prejudice against conventional armor, these formations are only found in Solama, or much more rarely, garrison units. Light and heavyweight types are preferred, while medium weight vehicles are very rare. 
Finally, infantry stars can consist of either elemental or conventional infantry. Elemental stars consist of 25 elementals and play a much more prominent role in clan warfare than conventional infantry. The regular infantry consists of 125 soldiers in a star, but these are usually Solama or Freeborn units, rarely incorporated into the standard clan order of battle. The rank coming between the star and the binary is the Nova, and we're gonna get to the binary too in a minute. The Nova is a special type of formation used by the clans. Also known as a double star, the Nova is the only major change from the clan military structure which had been adopted by every single clan for their Tumon. In effect, a Nova is a mixed binary, as it combines a star of Omnimax with a star of Elementals, an arrangement providing clan structure additional firepower for assault against fortifications or in a constricted environment. The main difference between a Nova and a mixed binary is the former's more intense emphasis on combined arms warfare. The result is that when working together, a Nova will outperform a mixed binary. But, if forced to operate separately in its constituent parts, it will be less effective than their standard counterparts. A star commander of the Mech Star commands the Nova, and is usually referred to as a Nova commander. Nova commanders have slightly more authority than usual star commanders, but still less than that of a star captain. The other star in the formation is led by the regular star commander, who answers to the Nova commander. Now, following the Nova, and of a much more clear-cut organization, is the Binary. The Binary is a common formation in clan military consisting of two stars, making it the equivalent of a light company in the Inner Sphere. Requiring only a modest increase in logistical support over a star, Binaries are among the most common military deployments fielded by the clans. A binary star can either be pure, consisting of two stars of the same unit type, or mixed, consisting of two stars of different unit types. Both these types are used by all the clans, with the former having a slight edge in number. Binaries are commanded by a star captain. The star captain is a mid-level officer rank in clan military, equivalent to a regular captain in the inner sphere. Consisting of 10 Omnimex, or in second line units Battlemex, the binaries are sometimes organized by weight class, although they will just as often contain stars of mixed weight. Aerospace binaries, meanwhile, consist of 25 Omnifighters or Aerospace Fighters, usually of mixed designs and weight classes, with naval binaries consisting of 10 to 12 vessels. An armor binary will consist of 20 combat vehicles, although given the clan's dislike for conventional armor, they too are reserved for Solama or Garrison units. An infantry binary can consist of 50 battle armored elementals, or, if conventional, 250 men, including a command squad. Not many clans bother to organize infantry beyond the binary level. The next is the supernova, a variation of the standard binary and trinary, which replaces the standard two or three stars with novas. A supernova binary or trinary is commanded by a nova captain usually one of the mech unit leaders. While all the clans recognize the rank of Nova Captain, some view that as a betrayal of Nicholas Kerensky's original ranking structure, and do not use it themselves. A straight-up follow-up to the binary mentioned earlier is the trinary. The trinary consists of three stars, making it the equivalent of a reinforced company in the inner sphere. Trinaries are commanded by a star captain, and regarding their size, they are pretty much 50% bigger binaries. And as we get closer to the end of their deployment sizes, we have the biggest cluster and galaxy. The cluster is a clan formation usually consisting of between 3 and 5 binaries or trinaries, with an average of 4 to 5 trinaries. Clusters fall in size between an inner sphere battalion and regiment but the clans regard them as the equivalent of regiments as far as prestige and battle honors go. Clusters are commanded by star colonels, often leading their unit from an independent command star or nova. Usually clusters are combined arms units, since fighting at this level requires an effective mix of forces, although how each clan organizes their units can vary greatly. On average, a typical cluster would consist of two Omnimech trinaries, 
an elemental binary, an omnifighter binary, and either a mixed trinary or supernova trinary. The so-called pure clusters consist of binaries and trinaries of one unit type, although these are much less common. Pure mech and fighter clusters are rare, and in many cases only temporary, although with the latter some clans do maintain dedicated formations as part of their frontline units, particularly for naval escort. Elemental clusters are even rarer, usually formed only for temporary special assignments, with some clans assigning an Omnimech to the command star for transportation purposes. Conventional armor and infantry clusters are pretty much unheard of among the clans. And finally for today, we have the Galaxy, the largest military formation fielded by the clans, equivalent to an Inner Sphere Brigade. Named for a letter of the Greek alphabet like Alpha, Delta, Beta, Gamma and so on, a galaxy consists of several clusters and is commanded by a galaxy commander. Galaxies are self-contained units which include all the required assets to mount an independent operation, although in practice galaxies rarely ever take to the field of battle as just one complete unit. Some galaxies can only have up to two clusters, while others can have as many as six. Most galaxies will have three to five clusters and include an independent command trinary or cluster. Nicholas Kerensky himself intended for the galaxies to serve as administration and logistical organizations rather than full battlefield units, and unlike smaller units, they never set down criteria for their composition. Support elements like engineers, artillery or mash units are organized at the galaxy level but they can be attached to individual clusters as required. The Galaxy Commander is the highest officer rank in the clan military outside of the Khan itself, with the naval equivalent being that of a Star Admiral. And this, my binary trinary supernova friends, has been what I wanted to tell you about clan military structure, organization and officers from Battletech for today. I know it does get confusing with all the novas, supernovas, clusters, binaries and whatnot, but hopefully next time you hear about any of these terms in either my battle mech videos or any other Battletech lore stuff, you will have at least an idea what it means. I'm certain there's some obscure things I missed in presenting all these, so if you folks know about anything important I neglected to say, do feel free to correct me. As always, I look forward to reading your thoughts on clan military in the comments below. Thanks a lot for watching to the end and have an awesome healthy day. This is GDN signing out.